Okay, so in this video, we will take a quick look at Taylor's theorem. So let's suppose that x0 is the center of our expansion, and that on some interval around x0, f of x is assumed to be infinitely differentiable, which means by that, that inside this interval around x0, all higher derivatives of the function f of x do exist. Then here's the statement of Taylor's theorem. So f of x can be expressed in the following fashion. Well, the first part is the truncated Taylor series of the function centered at x0. So we know the coefficients of the Taylor series are given by the nth derivative of the function at x0, the center of the expansion over n factorial, times of course x minus x0 to the n. But this is a truncated Taylor series, so it begins at 0, but it does not go up to positive infinity, but up to a fixed point, say uppercase n. So uppercase n here is some positive integer, and this is sometimes referred to as the nth degree Taylor polynomial of f of x centered at x0. As if you express or expand this finite sum out, you will realize that it is simply a polynomial of degree uppercase n. Now, of course, the equality is not so simple. There is also an error term, also sometimes called the remainder term, which has the following form. If you notice the, there's something missing here, but for the time being, the remainder term is the first omitted term of the truncated series, right? After lowercase n, takes on uppercase n, the next value is uppercase n plus 1. So this is the nth plus 1 derivative of f at, and we're going to see now, not exactly the center of the expansion, but some value close to it, times x minus the center to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. What Taylor's theorem says is that for any choice of positive integer n, you can make the equality valid if, and now we can look here, well, we need the value of x first to be in the interval where all higher derivatives of f do exist. So suppose that x is here. Then what Taylor's theorem says is that for any choice of positive integer n, the equality is valid for some choice of x between x0 and x. Let me call this, say, x hat. So if we just choose the right value between the center of the expansion and the chosen value of x, we call this value x hat, and if we evaluate the nth plus 1 derivative at this well-chosen value of x, then the equality is valid. Of course, as we take different values of n, we will take different values of x hat. So it is worth noting that x hat does depend on uppercase n. So you could write x hat subscript uppercase n to emphasize that the choice of x hat does depend on the choice of n. But the key is that for any choice of n, we can find some value of x hat between x0 and x, such that if we do evaluate the nth plus 1 derivative at this point, then the equality is valid. and we give this a shorter name. This, as I've said before, is the remainder. And so we call this R sub n, of course, as it depends on the choice of positive integer n. And now the idea is, well, the equality is valid for all values of n. And we hope to see when f of x will be equal to its Taylor series, not when we stop summing at uppercase n, but when we sum all the way up to positive infinity. So the idea is because the equality is valid for any positive integer n and picking the right value x hat, then we can simply let uppercase n tend to infinity on both sides of the equality. And let's see what comes out. Well, 
as we're letting n tend to infinity, f of x is always f of x. So this does not change. As we're letting n tend to infinity, the truncated Taylor series will become the full Taylor series. So summing from 0 to infinity, the nth derivative of the function at the center, x0, over n factorial, times x minus x0 to the n. And what we hope, of course, is that the function will equal to its Taylor series centered at x0. Well, what about the remainder term? Well, think about what needs to happen to the remainder term for the equality between the function and its Taylor series to be valid. We're saying both sides are equal for any choice of n, letting n tend to infinity, f of x stays f of x, the truncated Taylor series becomes the full Taylor series, and if the equality is to be valid, the remainder term in the limit has to disappear. Namely, it has to shrink to zero. If in the limit, our n does converge to zero, then as we're letting uppercase n tend to infinity on both sides, this term will vanish to zero, the truncated Taylor series becomes the full Taylor series, and f of x stays f of x. And this is now the criteria for a function to equal its Taylor series, and this is Taylor's theorem. A function will be equal to its full Taylor series, centered here at x0, if the remainder term from Taylor's theorem does converge to zero as uppercase n tends to infinity. And that's it.